Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha Namaste Namaste. Uh, this evening on page 221 of the Devi Gita, we're going to begin the discussion of chapter 12. And the goddess said, Rise in the early morning and remembering the shining lotus in the head. Re remember that shining lotus. Remember it as the color of camphor, radiant white, and there the respected guru is in her own form. She appears very content. She's happy lady. Huh? Isn't she happy? Yeah. Oh, she's, she appears very content with shining ornaments along with Swami J. <laughs> a little poetic license. The knowledgeable one will bow down to them and then remember the goddess Kundali or Kundalini. And I bow down to that foremost illumination who continually journeys up and returns long, 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 long. We did that this morning. And then, what does she do? She goes up and returns, uniting in the nectar of thought. The spaces she moves between are measured as she searches for the form and strength of bliss. After meditating upon me as the form of truth, consciousness, and bliss at the summit, he should then complete all the activities of personal hygiene. That was a very polite way of saying he should go visit the trees. Agni <laughs> Hodra, the sacred fire ceremony and offerings should be performed for the purpose of my pleasure by the excellent twice born. At the end of the fire ceremony established on his own special seat for worship, he should make the statement of a vow of firm determination to complete the worship. He sits down and does Achban Ashan Shudhi and takes the Sankalpa. That's what we did. Always perform Bhuta Shuddhi. The purification of the elements and the Matrika Nyasa. We did that. The establishment of the bead mantras within, and then the relay of Matrika Nyasa with the addition of the Maya Bija. Ring, ring, ring. In the Muladhara, establish the letter Ha. In the heart, the letter Ra. Between the two eyebrows, the letter E. And the entire mantra ring on the top of the head. And then he should establish the Tan Matras within his body as well as complete all the other nyasas as well. All the subtle forms of sight, sound, smell, touch, feeling. Uh, again, think of your own soul in the body of the as the peat, and we do the peat and yes. Um, and the place for worship of Dharma and the various qualities, and Dharma, the ideal of perfection. Gyan is wisdom. Gyan, Dharma, in the Gyan, in the Vairag, Gyan, my Aishwar, Gyan, wisdom and detachment. I swear you, the imperishable qualities, and then the four. Or lower of, of, of petals of the four of the lotus, uh, all dharma, again, avaragyaya, anishwaragyaya, uh, anishwaragyaya, uh, uh, all dharma is disharmony or in derogation of the ideal, um, uh, uh, again, ignorance, avaragyaya, attachment, and anishwaragyaya, the transient as it compared with the, uh, the, the imperishable. Then he should meditate upon the great goddess while expanding the pranayam. <sighs> and 
in my place in the lotus of the heart, the knowledgeable one will establish five seats for disembodied spirits. Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, Ishwar, and Sadashiva. These are the five great disembodied spirits who are situated at the base of my feet. They make the sofa upon which I sit. They are the soul of the five great elements, Shiti, Aptej, Mor, Wal, the earth, water, fire, air, and ether, as well as the five states of consciousness, Jagrat, Shwapna, Shushupta, Turiya, and Otita, Rup. Uh, the Jagrat is waking, Swapna, dreaming, deep, dreamless sleep, pure consciousness, and beyond all form. I am the indivisible form of consciousness, and therefore... I am beyond the total of all five. Then situated upon his seat, sitting on the asan, he should make him continually meditate upon the energy in the tantra. With a mind filled with the enjoyment of my worship, he should make jap. And that is the, the energy in the tantra is a kaya the forms of maya, the forms of the measurement of all existence, or the maya of illusion, the, which obscures the reality, the maya of the mother in relationship to the creation, and the maya of the one measurement of infinite consciousness, where no duality is allowed. The various forms of maya, after he has completed japa, he should then offer the argya and uh, an object connoting devotion prepared from a re large red flower, durva grass, rice, sesame, le leaf of tulsi, and other auspicious ingredients placed in a red cloth and tied together like a small bouquet. Make an argya and offer the argya. And we get, gave her the orgya, and then sit down the container while saying the mantra from your guru. And then bow down to the supreme goddess. Sprinkle it with water while thinking the weapon mantra. Fuck. But, 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 perform dig bandhan, close all the directions, then bow down to the Supreme Guru. I bow to my Guru, I bow to my Guru's Guru, I bow to uh, Guru's Guru's Guru, all the Gurus of the lineage, and I bow to the Supreme Guru. And taking his permission, a <clears throat> Guruji, meditate upon the supreme external place of worship, and then with an attitude of intuition, contemplate my divine, beautiful image situated in the heart. Bring her out and bring her in. Iha gach, Iha tishta, I establish you within. Here you are, seated here within. Make invitation to the place of worship. Iha gotcha, come on over. Come on up and see me sometime. And establish a life force with knowledge. And invite the goddess to be seated and offer water for washing her feet. And hands, and various other articles, water for a bath, a pair of clothes, various ornaments, uh, uh, scented flowers. Oh, they gave some great scented flowers just outside my office tonight. They were absolutely as fragrant. We're going to move the entire class over there afterward. Uh, give to the goddess whatever is suitable with all devotion. That came from the nature. It is totally suitable. Oh, <laughs> de <laughs> uh, He should worship the deity surrounding the yantra according to right understanding. The Sarvabhadra Mandala Devata. And if one be unable to perform this every day, then follow this discipline on Fridays. 
If you can do it every day, do it every day. If you can do it on Fridays, well, I'll take off on Fridays and do it. The primary goddess is the form of illumination. And then the deities of her entourage are to be remembered. Think that her illumination extends throughout the three worlds to the lowest reaches of the netherworld and Patalok. So she's got the seven levels of hell and the seven levels of heaven, the 14 levels uh, comparable to the 14 Manvantaras and the 14 Manus. And again, when the deities of her entourage are united, let's join hands, ladies and gentlemen, worship the principal goddess with scents. Oh, did we worship you with scent tonight, mama? Etc. Excellent scented flowers and perfumes, food offerings, bone vidyam samarpayami, tarp on, devans tarpayami, rishins tarpayami, pistrings tarpayami. A special offering of respect to the departed beetle nuts, Pugi and money and other objects of value. He should please be by reciting a thousand names. Or Sahasranam. Or a thousand ten malas of the your mula mantra. A kavach, the armory, armor of mantras, and there is one for each major deed. The Devi Shuktam, the hymn from the goddess from Rig Veda, which begins, O Baham, Rudre Bikir, Bachavik Sharam Yahom, and the Devi Atharva Shirsho mantras, or, or the Devi Upanishad, which is, uh, the, it, we're going to find it here in the Yadnid of, of this book, and at the beginning of the Chandi, which are known as the really or Hrim Upanishad. It's also called the Devi Upanishad. With the great knowledge of the great mantras, please me again and again. Humans, that means boys and girls alike, should ask for forgiveness. Aparada Sahasrani, please forgive me. From all the Divine Mother of the world with hearts overflowing with love. On every limb, the hairs will stand. We read in the ninth chapter, he, he even gets up and dances, dancing and singing loudly. With tears of love will flow, dancing and singing loudly. Please me again and again. The continuous recitation of the Vedas or the Puranas bring nourishment to all. I am present in every chapter. Therefore, that recitation pleases me. Everything that one has, even his own body, should always be offered to me. The eternal fire ceremony should be performed and those versed in the wisdom of our heritage, the Brahmins, offered excellent clothes. Young boys, the lepers, others who are wretched, should be fed by the one knowledgeable of the goddess, bowed down again and again from his own heart, and then allow her to go away by making the sergeant shamashwa, returning the deity into the unmanifest. Let her sit in your heart once again. All my worship can be performed with the ring beach mantra, one of excellent vows. Of all the mantras, Hring Bija is remembered as the supreme leader. Hring Bija mantra is an eternal mirror of me and thus capable of every reflection. Therefore, that which is given with Hring Bija is offered with every mantra. The Guru should be worshipped with ornaments, understanding that through her you have invited the effects of all good actions. Uh, thank you, Guru, for sharing with us the way how we can worship God. You gave us an example, you gave us instruction, you gave us inspiration, you gave us a kick in the pants and said, here are your flowers and here are objects and here are a thing where this is how you make the organ and this is how you make the, the worship and this is like where you put the flowers and how you worship the Yamta. This is how it's done. Thank you. Whoever worships the goddess in this way, the respected, beautiful one of existence, nothing remains difficult to him, and nothing ever will. At the end of his earthly body, he comes to my Moni Dweep, the island of jewels, to return to the total. 
That was pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Iti ke tati tanraja mahadeviya prapujanam. Oh, deva nityam namam titam. With the wisdom of the intrinsic nature of the goddess, the gods eternally bow down to him who bows down to the goddess. If you worship the goddess, the gods come and bow down to you. This is the explanation, O king, of the worship of the great gods. Consider the unlimited possibilities in accordance with your capacity. Make worship to me in this way and you will attain your goal. Mm. This Gita scripture of mine, do not ever tell to someone who is not a disciple. Nor is it to be imparted to one who is, who is void of devotion, filled with deceit, nor to him who maintains evil in his heart. The exposition of this Gita is like raising the cover from the breast of a mother. Therefore, certainly take great care to always protect this secret. It's hidden inside. It's very deeply hidden. It's mystical. It's a mystery. It's deeply mystical. It's hidden inside and you can't readily divulge it. You, without discrimination, you can't give it away unless people are desiring to achieve this knowledge they will only misuse it or abuse it or use it for selfish reasons it should be given to a devotee a disciple the oldest son one who is dependable of good character and filled with devotion to the goddess at the time of memorial services for the departed, if it is read before an assembly of Brahmins, all the ancestors will be pleased and will attain the highest place. Yes, said. This is what was spoken by Bhagavati, the supreme spirit of all parts. <laughs> Uh, there, and this must be reflected upon, upon within. The gods were completely delighted to have had the vision of the goddess. And then, from the seed of Himalaya, the goddess Himavati, she who comes from the Himalayas, or from Himalaya, manifested. She was known as Gauri, she was rays of light, and she was given in union with Sankar Siva. And then Skanda Kartike was born, and by him Tarak was killed long ago at the time when the ocean was churned by beings of the spiritual world, the gods and the demons, that they turned the ocean of milk, as well as the kings of men. Many gems and other things came forth, and the, then hymns were chanted by the gods to the goddess for the purpose of inviting Lakshmi. As a kindness to them, Rama, Rami, Mami! Lakshmi came out of the sea, so she became the daughter of Himalayas. She was the daughter of the sea, of the ocean, and she was the daughter of Daksh, Pajapati. And the gods gave her to the resident of Vaikuntha, that's Vishnu, and he became at peace. So remember, the story began with uh, you know, Gauri and Lakshmi, uh, the, uh, Sati and Lakshmi left uh, Shiva and Vishnu, and how come Lakshmi is known as the daughter of Daksha and the daughter of the ocean and the daughter of Himalayas? How did one lady get three fathers? And this, uh, thus, this is the explanation, O king, of the great, excellent greatness of the goddess and of the birth of Gauri and Lakshmi. Who gives attention to this explanation will ful attain fulfillment of all desires. Do not speak this to others indiscriminately. The secret of this explanation should be controlled. This Gita is the secret of existence, so be careful to maintain its secrecy, because with the secrecy comes its sanctity. With the sanctity comes your sense of privilege. When you do the puja, when you understand the philosophy, you get such an opportunity, such a privilege to join in the lineage of sadhus from time immemorial, from the beginning of the churning of the ocean of consciousness. 
by means of it all liberation or realization is attained and who stands forth prominently in support of this teaching becomes free from all fault. If you stand up in support of this teaching, if you exemplify this teaching, if you convey this teaching, if you share this teaching, it is pure like a divine wind. Tell me more. What do you wish to hear? Om. Iti Devi Gita Sama. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. So here we have the perfect, a very, very clear description of what was later to be incorporated in Devi Archana Padoti or Devi, uh, um, uh, uh, De De Devi Smriti, Chandi Homa Padoti. Uh, the, these are various forms that even came down into Purohit Darpon. So the Cosmic Puja, as we translated it, is a compiled document. It's described very succinctly here in the Devi Gita. And it was, its origins manifested in the three Rahasyas at the end of the Chandi, which describe the essence of the Chandipa how she put all the energies in balance and how she put, took all the negativities and, and put them under control. And like Hansel and Gretel, we made a path, a, a, a map that showed how we guided our attention and our awareness into the presence of the goddess, invited her into our hearts, put her out on a yantra where we could serve her and give her all the objects of respect that connote our attentiveness. Let's see if there are any questions. Yes, please, Nanda. Swamiji, is the japa always more effective when you do a puja first? No, but a puja contains japa. So uh, the, ja the puja that we did today, we limited the japa for ex expediency, but it says do a thousand uh, mantras of japa when you make the pranpatishta and you establish her in your heart, then do a thousand names. So then uh, there's japa. If you, when you put uh, every deity on the altar, you do at least one mala, if not more. So then you do japa. And so then you've got japa before and rise in the early morning and remember your guru and do japa. And then remember hrileka and do japa. And remember the mantra hrim and do japa. And then invite the goddess and do japa. And then invite all the gods and the, of her entourage and do japa. And why are you thinking that japa is something separate from puja? Japa is part of the puja. Yes, please. We have a question from Sadhana Shakti in Seattle. Namaste, Sadhana Shakti. Namaste. In verse 3, it says, the, space, the spaces she moves between are measured. What is this referring to exactly? The distance between each chakra? Yes. That's a, a measurement of the space between each chakra. You're making the journey. Long, 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 long. Each was a measured step. You can measure the space between each chakra. So that's the, well, it, it, those are the spaces that we're referring to in this instance, in this context. Yes, please. Some of the things that are described in this are not included in the, in the Cosmic Puja, like um, the, the Sri Vidya. It sounds like when it says, um, uh, continually meditate upon the energy of the Tantra, you mentioned that we do it can be Kailarim, it, it's discussing the various forms of Maya. So it, it can be a Kadi Vidya, it could be Kahadi Vidya, it could be just uh, Navarna Vidhi, it could be your Moon Mantra or your Guru Mantra, or your Diksha Mantra, it, you can define it in any way you choose. Uh, there's no necessity to define it in one way. 
But they're talking about the, the, the bhavana, the energies of the tantra, which encompass all that can be perceived in the senses, conceived in the mind, and known through intuition. So we put that in the context of kavi vidya, which is the maya of shankya, which is illusion, that which obscures the reality, the maya of tantra, that which is the, the mother in relationship to her creation, and the creation in relationship to the mother, and that in the maya of the Danta, where there is only one and there is only a postulation of duality. And what about the Aham Rudra beer? Uh, that's not in the Kazan Puja either. Where, is there a place that we could put that in? Well, it comes in the Chandi, and the Cosmic Puja is a prelude to the Chandi. So. Uh, I, all of this is interconnected. I'm sorry you weren't in the beginning of the classes, but uh, it, it, we're talking about the trilogy of the Chandipat, the Cosmic Puja, and the Devi Gita. So taken as a whole body of la literature, these are three specific pieces which deal with the worship of the goddess. The Devi uh, Gita gives us the philosophy, the the, the uh, 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 Cosmic Puja gives us the practical application, and the Chandi takes us step by step towards the, uh, uh, the achievement of our goal. Yes, please. We have a question from Sadatmananda. Namaste, Sadatmananda. Namaste. Verse 15 says, Taking his per permission, meditate upon the superior external place of worship. What, do what does this mean? Well, we place the goddess all throughout the body, uh, uh, and then we put, placed her all throughout the chakras. So here we have her in the, uh, in the matrika nyas. We're establishing the goddess in the external body. Etc. We're putting her all throughout the body in the external place of worship. So in this way, we're recognizing the divinity and the divine energy is present in my external body, in my internal body, in my chakras, in my bhavana. I've invited the goddess into my heart and I'm energizing her within. This is the supreme mystical secret because it's inside you. You've got to go very deeply inside in order to understand or realize that energy inside. We have a question from Ramya in Bangalore. Namaste, Rami, Mami. Pranam. In verse 12, it says, si situa situated in his seat, he should meditate upon the energy in the Tantra. What is this energy? Uh, first of all, his seat is his asana. So he's sitting on his asana, and he should med meditate on the energy in the Tantra. And we just discussed this the energy in the Tantra is the synthesis of all the knowledge, all the Gyan Shakti, all the Bhavana, all the feeling, all the intuition, all the, uh, all the inspiration that the sadhu has, male or female. So it's not uh, just because I used he doesn't mean I'm prejudiced to boys. I like the girls too. In fact, I worship them. <laughs> so, Rami, Mami, this energy is the, 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 the energy of the Tantra that we're talking about is the synthesis of all the knowledge and all the feeling and all the bhavana and all the attitude and all the... I mean, just take this holistic spiritual me and that's all the energy I've got. I want to meditate on that and make it the most pure and the most succinct and the most perfectly defined energy. Don't make it a nebulous, oh, yeah, yeah. it's something e e e effervescent and it's out there someplace. It's something very clearly defined and situated in my heart, and I can relate to it. I can have a relationship with it. I, I can become one with that energy. Yes, please. We have a question from Jennifer. Namaste, Jennifer. Namaste. Namaste, Shriman Swanji. I would be so grateful if you can answer this question that I have grappled with most of my life. Uh-oh. <laughs> Chapter 11, verse 26 states, The Brahmins should not converse with them, meaning those who fall away from Dharma. I understand the saying, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, and I, and I have experienced many a time my own misjudgment in allowing myself to be in a situation because I think I can make a difference and get led into trouble. However, 
If we separate light from the darkness, how can we illuminate or hope to dispel ignorance? Jennifer, there will come a time when I get tired of living in the darkness and I'm going to come closer and closer and closer to your light. And when I come and ask the question, then I will hope you will be compassionate and give me an answer. But until I don't ask the question, you can't come out and proselytize or pass out incense in the airports or, or give books on, the, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on street corners or in any way can you influence me out of my darkness because of your words that come to me when I'm not ready to hear them. So therefore, as a Brahmin, you are not to go out of your way to try to correct me. You are to go out of your way to correct yourself. And by your example, I will gravitate towards mimicking your example. You will become the guru and I will be the disciple. And that's what I understand it to mean the Brahmin shouldn't go out of their way to, to, to convert the heathen, ignorant people who are doing their bogeys in the world and they're doing silly things. You don't have to change the world, just change yourselves. And you remember, according to Confucius, if you change yourself, you change your family. If you change your family, you change your community. If you change the community, you change the village, and the village is going to change the city, and the city will change the county, and one great county is going to inspire the whole state, and the whole state is going to inspire the country, and the country is going to convert the entire world. So we have a duty to do our part and to live our part and that doesn't mean i've got to go out and explain to you the error of your ways it means i have to explain to me why i want to live in harmony and 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 why do i want to do it for myself and that's what i understand by such a statement i hope it relieves all the fears you've had since for a long long time we have a question from ambika yes please ambika Namaste. Namaste. If we are putting all these bija vibrations into different parts of our body, would it be true to say that our body is actually one big combination of vibrations harmoniously vibrating in one glorious cosmic chord? And when we are feeling ill or ornery, that we are actually out of tune? <laughs> wow, are you a poet? <laughs> that is so poetic. That is pure music to my ears. That is absolutely <laughs> true. Do you know the microcosm is a perfect reflection of the macrocosm? So all of the vibrations that you are wearing in your body, and you know, in addition to having them in your chakras and in your limbs and all throughout your body, you've got them in the bracelet around your wrist. Every letter of Sanskrit, every vibration of the universe is an ornament on your hand as well as uh, residing in your body inside and outside your body. And yes, if you're out of tune, you're out of whack, uh, you, <laughs> you, you have a propensity to make sour notes <laughs> and be out of tune. But if you're all tuned up and you're, everything's in order and everything's in harmony, you are in balance and your vibration is so pleasant, you can even, it, 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 you create enjoyment wherever you go. Look where Sri Ma goes. She goes into hospitals. She goes downtown. She goes to all these different kinds of situations and she just walks in with the grace of harmony. Everyone falls in love with her immediately upon entrance. People come up to us every single day oh I love your cloth <laughs> they don't know that they love what's in the cloth more than they love the cloth but they love it they gotta comment on something because she's radiating this light and they don't know that it's her inner essence that's radiating they say oh I like your cloth <laughs> it's so bright and it's so yellow uh, one day you know we're in the hospital one lady said, hello, hello, listen, listen. <laughs> oh, we did not feel we were doing that. And after we looked at the piano, so that lady is calling us. I said, your dress is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a beautiful dress. <laughs> yeah. But the person who's wearing the dress is more beautiful than the dress. And you know what she's got? In fact, all the cloths in her closet are the same color. 
So they're not all the most beautiful dresses. <laughs> But the person inside those cloths is radiating with such vibrancy that everyone wants to comment, not just on the dress, but on the radiance. So you're absolutely right, Ambika. If you have all your vibrations in tune and you're in harmony and you feel that radiant spirit coming out, everyone will notice in every circumstance. Yes, please. Yes. Swami, for me, Jal Neti is a bit messy. I'm sorry. No. The Try. Jal Neti? Jal Neti is messy. It's messy. very messy. So can I just do it before I start the puja or should I do it during the cosmic puja? You can write your own puja. These are modular. You can take any VD out and do it the way you want to. I, I just presented it the way it was written in the book, but if you want to change it, you can change it. I think, I think she should not change. You think she should not change it? I do too. That's why I wrote it the way I did. But if she doesn't like it that way, then she can change it. She's trying to make it easy. Herself. I know. I know she's trying to make it easy. It's messy and it's water. And it doesn't matter. It's, it's a half a teaspoon of water and how much mess did it make? Why do you use a lot? Use a half a teaspoon of water. You saw what I did today. You don't have to you do the water in your hand. It's this way. You take up the, the do this way. You know? it, it's <laughs> really refreshing and cleansing, and your anulom bilom apranayam is so much more efficient after you've cleaned the sinuses. But if you don't like to do it, don't do it. Don't, don't worry. That doesn't bother me. I, I'm not offended in the least. You can use my book as a doorstop. You can use it as, <laughs> as a fire starter. You can use it. The, if you paid for the price of the book, you can use it for anything you want. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Just an answer. I'm not offended. Well, well, I'm very not gonna... easy. Very easy. You take your hand or water after they do this. You know, it's very easy. Yes, please. We have a question from Vivekananda. Namaste, Vivek. Namaste. If Hreem is the supreme form of mother, why don't we just chant Hreem 24-7 all the time? Is it, <laughs> is, isn't Hreem the essence of Navarna Mantra, the Chandi? Why do anything other than, other than Hreem? Let me see how long you can do it. <laughs> Absolutely, Vivek. If you could say ring 24-7, you have nothing else to do. But if you miss, then go back and read the book. It's a good book. I know the guy who wrote it. Yes, please. We have a question from Moshami and Siddharth. Namaste, Moshami. Namaste, Siddharth. Pranam. Why is, why is Devi Gita a mystical secret that should be given only to a devotee or disciple or a dependable person? Does it mean one will have to first grow devotion for the goddess through some other scripture practice? Is there such a constraint for any other scripture? There are many constraints for most scriptures, and there's a hierarchy of evolution. Uh, the Devi Gita is extremely esoteric because it contains the synthesis of all the various philosophies from Nyaya, Vaisheshik, Shankya, uh, uh, Yoga, Purva Mimamsha, Uttara Mimamsha. And in, you can see in the Purva Mimamsha section they gave us the entire outline of the Cosmic Puja or Shamashti Upashana. So that's why it is a sophisticated document. You want to give it to people who, are, who have been practicing, who are devoted. Uh, it, you could start really with the Guru Gita or with the, the, the beginner scriptures and, and, and with the Shiva beginner's puja and the Durga beginner's puja. We made beginners, intermediate and advanced pujas just for this reason because you can't start with the PhD or the postdoc classes. You got to start where you are, where you're at. You start with a beginner's puja, you a 15-minute puja or a 20-minute puja. Otherwise, you end up asking questions like Nanda does. How can I make this simpler? <laughs> 
And that's just the question she keeps asking. How do you make it easier? And the, the way you make it easier, start with the beginner's puja and then say, how can I make this more sophisticated? How can I, make, how can I enhance this puja? So you go from beginners to the intermediate, and you go from the intermediate to the advanced, and then you get to a postdoc puja, which happens to be the Devi Gita, the cosmic puja, and the Chandi taken together as a trilogy. This is postdoc studies. This is, not, this is not for your average Joe. Joe Sadhu who wants to be, I'm going to start out, I'm going to meditate for 15 minutes a day. This is not that kind of uh, worship. We did it at top speed this morning in two hours. But normally I spend three and a half to four hours. Just on, <laughs> on the cosmic puja. Uh, then I spend two and a half hours on, on the Devi Gita and, and three and a half to five hours on the, on the Chandipat. And then, you know, that's a day's work. Then I'm ready to go to the office. Uh, so the, the, the ideal would be to start at something very simple and work your way up to the bigger and better and greater things. And keep asking, how can I make, how can I add more? What more can I do? Rather than saying, Ugh, how can I make this easier? How can I make this more simple? It's easy. Just you put this one aside and take the beginner's book. And then when you're ready, take in a couple of VDs from the intermediate book and add it to the beginner's book. And you'll take your 20-minute puja, make it into 30 minutes and 40 minutes and 50 minutes, and then you'll say, Guy, I can sit for an hour. I'll do the intermediate puja. I'll do the Hanuman puja. I'll do the Lakshmi puja. I'll do the... And then you will take that puja and it becomes easier and easier for you. Oh, well, oh, I want to learn the cosmic puja. I want to do, do the full Chandipat. I want to do the full Devi Gita. I want to do all three of them together as a day's work. Neat job if you can get it. We have a question from Julia. Namaste, Julia Ma. Namaste. Beside yours and Ma's devotees, are other people following the, this chapter's path? Yes. Uh, in fact, we're on our way um, uh, later this fall to Boishnab Devi, uh, where they're using our Chandi pot as the text of the temple. They're also using the Chandipata as our Chandi as the text of the temple in Kamakya. Uh, but they also do the, they worship Mahakali, Mahalakshmi, Mahasaraswati, and they worship Chandi, and, and uh, they, they do this form of worship. Now they don't necessarily use our cosmic puja uh, uh, as their padoti but they use a similar padoti, a sister padoti, uh, which is all in Sanskrit and which has not been transliterated. But they do use our translation to explain the mantras. So the answer is yes. Yes, please. We have a question from Usha. Namaste, Usha. Pranam, thinking of our own soul and the body as a place of worship, is that a specific place like the heart to focus on or a general thought from verse 8? Yes, it's, it's a general thought. You cannot localize, uh, you can't locate the soul. So if you want to go in the heart, you can. If you want to go in the Agya Chakra, you can. If you want to go in the Sahasrara, you can. You're not wrong. You're right. No matter where you go, if you're thinking about your own soul, my Atma, my soul, my consciousness is the divine representative of this goddess that I'm in love with and that I'm worshipping. I'm worshipping her outside. I'm worshipping her inside. And that is the form of consciousness that I'm worshipping, my own soul. She is my very essence. Yes, Usha. That's a great illumination. Yes, please. We have a question from Sadhana Shakti. Namaste, Sadhana. In verse 14, it says, closing all the directions. Can you please elaborate on this? Yes, it's called Dig Bandhan. And we go in the 10 directions. We snap our fingers in the 10 directions. And above and below, you've got the four, eight cardinal points of the compass, the four north, south, east, west, and northwest, southeast, northwest, south, east. Northeast, southwest, above and below the Das Dig Bandhan with Turi. Yes, please. 
We have a question from Sadat Mananda. Namaste! Why do we establish the deity in our body, like in the Matrika Nyas or the other Nyasas? Are we just trying to wake ourselves up to the fact that the goddess lives in our body? And that this is not my body, this is the temple of God. This is her body and we're going to put our consciousness in alignment with her will and we're going to serve her to the best of our capacity. That's, a, that's our goal, our objective. We'll maintain the patience and the understanding. What is her desire for this tool? And she is the craftsman, I am the tool. She is the driver, I'm the car. All, all that good stuff we sing regularly, well, we're going to do it. We're going to put ourselves at one mint or attuned. At one mint means attuned. And we're going to attune ourselves to the, the goals and the vision of the Divine Mother. What does she want from this tool? And how can I get out of the way so she can use this tool efficiency and with the efficiency that she desires? Yes, please. We have another question from Julia. Yes, please, Julia. From verse 39. Then from the seed of Himalaya, the goddess Himavati manifested. Is this related to what Himalaya asked at the beginning of the Devi Gita, how to be worthy of the birth of the goddess? Actually, uh, it goes a little bit before there, where Him uh, uh, Himalayas was doing Jop and Top, and, and the goddess said, I'm going to manifest as your daughter. I'm going to take birth in your home. So then Himalaya said, well, what kind of a dad should I be? What should be my way of life? What should be my bobbin of my feeling? What should be my attitude towards life? What kind of environment should I maintain so that you can accomplish your purpose when you take birth in my house? Then the goddess said, she gave us the whole Devi Gita and she told us about the philosophy and about the holistic spirituality and about the harmony of all the yogas and about the harmony of all and she told us how to do puja and how to meditate and how to do asana and how to do pranayama and she how to establish the letters within your body and how to do the entire cosmic puja and then he said thanks and then she took birth in his house and Haimavati is uh, the daughter of Himalaya. Her other name is Parvati. So he's, uh, Himalaya is known as Parvat, and Parvati <coughs> is the daughter of the mountain. Yes, please. We have a question from Sadatmananda. Yes, Sadatmananda. Namaste. Verses 9 and 10 say, in my place in the lotus of the heart, the knowledgeable one will establish five seats for disembodied spirits, Rama, Vishnu, Rudra, Ishwar, and Sada, Shiva. Could you please explain this practice and let me know where it is in the cosmic puja? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the chakras. When you're worshipping the chakras uh, and you have uh, um, um, uh, the various deities of the chakras. So when you go long, 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 young, hong, hong, this yong is the ether and it's uh, in the heart and and uh, 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 the the, uh, the uh, no is the vayu in, in the heart. Uh, look under the the uh, 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 and, and you'll find the, the the deities of the heart. So uh, it, it's in that part, uh, place, and that, if that's what you're looking at, was the question. Where did you find it? What page? I don't know what page it's on. <laughs> <laughs> question yeah. from Sadhana Shakti. Yes, Sadhana. Related to the uh, uh, burning of Sati's body. Yes. Why would Shiva consciousness be confused if Sati burned herself in the fire of yoga? Wouldn't they be more connected? No. Uh, do you know all of us guys, when, when the girls leave, we get confused? I mean, it's just a fact of life. Uh, the, the girl is the Shakti and she's the inspiration and she's the motivation and she's the def definition of what is our goal in life. And so Shiva, uh, when he was bereft of Shakti, he became confused and he had no function in life. 
In fact, he, he even stopped transforming. Uh, he stopped destroying. He stopped doing everything. He just thought about sati. And all he could think of was to meditate on the body of Sati. So he went to all of these Shakti Pitras and he went and he saw the part of Sati and that, uh, that had been cut apart and he saw, oh, there's her hand and there's her arm and the knee bone connected to the thigh bone. And he made uh, a vision of how, from looking at the part, how could he conceive the whole? that avayav yoga, and he conceived the entirety, the whole, and that was his whole mission in life, was to contemplate the, the existence or the form of the goddess. And it wasn't in for a long, long time that the gods were able to propitiate Shiva and to say, hey, Shiva, uh, if we could bring Shakti back into manifestation, would you marry with her? And Shiva said, not for passion not for desire, not because of any selfish motivation on my part, but as a service to existence, as a service to the gods, I would certainly uh, unite with Shakti again. So then the, all the gods and the munis and the rishis went off and they propitiated Sati and they propitiated Shakti and said, Shakti, she was said, if you come into a body, he'll marry you again. Would you please come into a body? And Shakti well, took her time and thought about it <laughs> and said, do a little more job, <laughs> do a little more top. And then finally she said, okay, I will, I will take birth in Himalaya's house. And I will be known as Parvati, the daughter of the mountain. Yeah, that one back there. And I will marry with Shiva again, and Shiva and I will bring forth the son who is going to take the illuminator of duality and put him in his place. So it, that's why he became confused. He had no object upon which to focus. A confused consciousness in the sense that there was no duality. So he was just totally concern, consumed within. He had no external phenomena upon which to focus. Nothing, there was no duality. How could he pay attention to what? He just sat in nearby Kalpa Samadhi confused by the outside world. There is no outside world but a lot. To kasmi devaya habishadid meha. To which form of divinity shall we pay our attention and obeisance? We have a question from Sharanya. Namaste Sharanya. Pranam. Can you describe how chanting the 108 Shakti Pithams benefits the deceased? I have seen Bhagavad Gita chanted for the newly deceased prior to the funeral rites. Is it acceptable to chant any scripture at the time of death, or are the names of the 108 Shakti Peets more beneficial than the others? Uh, there are specific scriptures according to different traditions, Sharanya, which proclaim that if you chant this scripture at the time of Shrad and Tarpon, your ancestors get a specific benefit. Devi Gita is one such scripture. Bhagavad Gita is another such scripture. There is also a tradition to listen to the uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam Parayan for nine days or to listen to the, uh, 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 the Ramayana, uh, the, the entire part of Ramayana. Uh, so there are various uh, traditions according to the various sects of Hinduism and they say if you listen to this at the time of Shad and Tarpon there are specific benefits which accrue to the deceased and to the ancestors seven generations previous and to the ancestors seven generations to come 14 generations so specifically in the Devi Gita it says if you listen to the recitation of the 108 Shakti Pitas, then you get a specific benefit. And it, then at the end, in chapter 12, it just said, if you listen to the whole thing, you get a, 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 the whole Devi Gita, you get a specific benefit. And we know that there's a tradition for listening to the recitation of the Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, uh, those scriptures which have a specific declaration of, of benefit 
to be derived from recitation at certain times, definitely we want to pay attention to those scriptures more than other scriptures. Of course, you can recite the Chandipat all the time, or all the places of pilgrimage are located in the big foot of the right toe of your guru. So if you just go to the big toe of the right foot of your guru, or if like Bebek, you sing ring, ring, ring 24-7 and never miss a breath, then you don't have to do anything else. But if you're like me and you miss a breath from time to time, then you gotta, you, you better switch to another mantra because otherwise you're gonna get worldly in a, in a flash, <laughs> very quickly. Yes, please. We have a question from Vivekananda. Yes, BB. <laughs> Can the meditation with Preem in verse seven be used outside of the Kazakh puja, perhaps before any puja or before chanting the Chandi? If so, how many repetitions, repetition, repetition should we do? Do you know uh, the traditional uh, formula for Siddhi is one lakh per letter? Uh, so if you have four letters in ring, then you can do four lakhs every time you sit down before you do it, before you can do puja. I doubt highly if you'll get to the puja if you do four lakhs of ring. Uh, you could possibly, if you really, really practice, you could do one mala per breath. That would be very fast. But if you could do one mala per breath, then you have 400,000 breaths before you start the puja. Okay, let's get, a, get real. <laughs> yes, please. We have a question from Sadat Mananda. Yes, Sadat Mananda. I noticed that, that at the beginning of the Devi Gita, you said that Manasa Devi sent her son Ashtik Muni to stop Janame Jai's yagya. And then Janame Jai asked these questions to Ashtik Muni. So why in the text does it say Vyas Uvacha rather than Ashtik Muni Uvacha? Oh, because uh, Vyas is narrating the story to Shukdev who is telling the story to uh, uh, Janame Jai. And it was, the question was not proposed to Ashtik Muni. Ashtik Muni said to Janame Jai, if you want to complete your yagya, O king, then you call Shukdev and let him uh, 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 give you a Gan Yagya. Let him give you, instead of uh, burning all the snakes, you should listen to the recitation of the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Now, and so uh, uh, Janame Jai said, Shukdev, you please come. And Shukdev said, uh, Dad, that was his father, yes. Uh, he said, Dad, how do I answer the question? Uh, this king wants to know how do you worship the gods? And Vyas Uvacha. And that's how the story began. Yes, please. We have another question from Sadat Manan. Yes, please. Why is it that when all of the other Rishis and Munis asked for peace for Hara and Hari, and Daksha asked and but Daksha asked for the Divine Mother to take birth in his house? Is this desire by itself selfish? Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. If I'm the father of the Divine Mother, then I must be something special. If I am the holder of the Shakti, then I'm Shaktimon. And if I'm Shaktimon, then uh, I'm, uh, I'm pronounced or distinguished or dif differentiated from the rest of the Monies. I didn't want just that they get peace. I didn't want, I wanted to be the the one who gave him the peace. <laughs> I brought the Divine Mother. Daksh means ability. Yogata, uh, Karmakamata, uh, uh, Karmakamata. Uh, he has the uh, Karmakamata, the, the, the capacity to produce efficient behavior, the ability, and he wants to be distinguished and recognized for his abilities. So his motivation was somewhat selfish. He didn't want just to bring peace to creation and to the universe, but he wanted to be the one who was recognized as the Prajapati, the Pati of all the Praja, the Lord of all beings born, who was the one who succeeded in bringing the Divine Mother into manifestation. We have a question from Ramya in Bangalore. Namaste Rami, Mami. Pranam. Can you please explain how Icha, Kriya, and Gyan Shakti relate to the three gunas? Do they work differently when each guna is predominant? 
Yes, they do. Uh, icha, Kriya, and Jnana Shakti. Icha is Rajaguna, Kriya is Satyaguna, and Gan is Tamoguna. And when each one of these gunas is predominant, you have greater preponderance of Icha, Kriya, Jnana Shakti. The energy of desire, Icha, the energy of action, Kriya, the energy of knowledge or wisdom, Jnana Shakti. And Jnana Shakti is the function of Tamaguna because if I'm dark to the outside, uh, then I'm illuminated within. And that's the wisdom. And Icha is the function of Rajaguna. I have a desire for, it's my desire. There's an I. So I desire and therefore the desire may, becomes manifest. And uh, Kriya is any action. So here we have action, desire, and knowledge combining in every atom and every function and our point of view defines which one is predominant to us at this time. For example, if you look at this Swami, he's sitting in a lazy boy, he's, he's just a lazy good for nothing, he's producing no action whatsoever. His body is completely lethargic. So he's in Tamaguna, he's in a state of rest, Whoa, wait a minute, he's got some Jnana Shakti because he's talking about wisdom. Well, he's got some Kriya because he's doing some action. And he's got some Icha because he has a desire to share enlightenment with all his family and friends. Now, how are you going to define it? You can only define by your point of view. What are you looking for? What are you looking at? What's your point of view? And that's how you define the predominance or preponderance of Icha Kriya Jnana Shakti, of Satta Raja Tamaguna. They're all united in the harmony of all action, in all existence. And this holistic spiritual doctrine is the doctrine of the Devi Gita. <laughs> If I have the feeling or the desire that I'm going to make worship to you, this is in an action. This is an icha. This is a desire just to put the the, fun, to, the desire to perform the worship is desire. The performance of the worship is a, an action. When he get, completes that puja, he gets illuminated with wisdom. Icha, Kriya, Jnana, Shakti are all, uh, all effective simultaneously. Without knowledge, you can't produce efficient action. Without desire, you won't produce efficient action. They all unite in every action. And that's our doctrine of the Devi Gita, the holistic spiritual harmony of all the, the spiritual concepts, all the tattvas, all the philosophies, all the steps of philosophy that we talked about. From Nyaya, Boisheshika, Shanka, uh, uh, Yoga, Purvami Mangsha, Uttami Mangsha, even starting from Charbak. If it's in your senses, it's in your mind. Starting from the most gross, we go to the most subtle. From the Anamaya coast to the Pranamaya coast to the Manamaya coast, the Biganamaya coast to the Anandamaya coast. All the Devi Gita is teaching us again and again is the doctrine of holistic spiritual knowledge. It's all one. There is no Karma Yoga separate from Jnana Yoga. There is no Dhyana Yoga separate from Bhakti Yoga. There is only Yoga. You cannot dissect them. You can't take this path or that path. There's only one path. It's your path. You're all on it. We're all doing it all the time. Every time we do anything, there's a harmony of yoga in everything we do. And that's just what the Devi Gita is saying. It's telling us, well, Tapasso Devata Arguayam Taposhi Sharvam Pratishtitam Tasmat Tapa Sreshtram Every atom of existence resides in Tapasya. We're all doing Tapasya every moment of every day of our manifested existence. Every movement creates a vibration, and every vibration creates 
friction, and every friction makes heat, and all heat is tapasya. All heat is tapas. Taposhi sharavam pratishtitam within tapasya resides this entire prapanch. Everything composed of five elements, this entire creation is doing tapasya all the time. Tasmat, therefore, tapa, do your tapasya. Sreshta, realize the ultimate. Om sam sarsvati namaha. Namaste.